If you'd like to try what we make at Superstition, it's as easy as going to our website, superstitionmeadery.com, clicking on Web Store, and you're shopping. Make sure you follow us on social media because we release new products almost every week, and you might just find your next favorite craft beverage. Cheers. Hey guys, we're gonna try something that we've never had before. Uh, it's a traditional mead that went into a toppling Goliath Morning Delight coffee stout barrel. They use vanilla and maple syrup. It's one of the most famous stouts in the world. It's, uh, it's, it's an incredible beer. And usually once a year we'll trade just four barrels back and forth with this brewery. We still have to go actually meet up here and there to do a collab. But a lot of times that's how a relationship starts. We met these guys at a McKellar Fest years ago just kind of hit it off talking about ideas and we've sent each other beer and mead and barrels and I think this is going to be really unique but where this is headed is different than where it is today so this is going to become cannonball shoeys pecan pie something meat so <laughs> that's the working title for uh, Samantha who's our COO she had this idea and and you know really anyone that works at Superstition um, can can come to production come to me Kim whoever and say hey I've got an idea for a mead and if you, you know, it's a good idea, usually they're pretty good ideas, mm -hmm. and you want to come out here to production, even work with the crew, do a test batch, or even if it starts as a bench trial, if it's something crazy, we're like, we need to just stir this up first, you know, and see how it's going to go. All the way up to, let's just throw some meat in this amazing barrel, and then we know we can, we can roast pecans, and we can get some spices, and we're going to turn this into what will be like a fall spiced pecan pie inspired mead. Yeah, that sounds so good. So we're gonna see how it's going right now. And to do that, we're gonna climb up to the third row of our, of our barrels here. And we've got two of the same barrel. And so I'm gonna hit the, the bungs and the nails with isopropyl alcohol, just in case we need to ventilate this guy. But we're gonna pull our sample through a half inch of oak. These barrels began their life as new American oak barrels that were heavy charred to make bourbon. And then that's what these guys use to age, age the stout in. So, oh, Kim, thank you very much. So we've got our hammer. This is starting to dry already. Uh, have the ambassador, please. And if I drop a nail, you'll know about it. You'll be able to help me out. All right. That seems like it's out far enough. All right, and we've got a stream. Perfect. No need to vent the bung. It looks like it's in a stout barrel. Yeah, it's beautiful. Wow. Looks like, like liquefied maple syrup coming out of this. All right, back home for you. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much. All right. All right, bartender. You going for the next one? No, no, let's, let's try one at a time. Right. I like to, uh, to compare them and see if, uh, if there is any difference. I can still smell the isopropyl. Yeah, it's pretty strong. Yeah. We have Ooh. to use our, our training to separate that <laughs> from what we're getting out of this. Wow, that is beautiful. Mm. You know, with, with the light reflecting, it's got kind of a ruby color, even though it's got that, that influence from the stout where it's got this nice caramel brown, almost brown, but that ruby is gorgeous. Oh, it just smells like really good honey. Almost like caramelized honey. It smells like a boche. Mm -hmm. So when we make a mead and we cook the honey and then ferment it or even blend it in, we can get flavors of caramel and marshmallow that only come from the Maillard reaction of heating up honey. And you're right, that's exactly what this smells mm -hmm. like. The only real problem with doing that process is, well, we do it on a turkey burner outside, and it's usually <laughs> in the warmer months, and bees love it. So someone's going to get stung when we're cooking honey. Wow. You get caramel in the nose? Totally. And I get that marshmallow you are mentioning, too. There's a little fruit. Maybe like a touch of apple. Yeah, like a candied apple. Mm -hmm. There's a familiar flavor, and I can't, it's like in my memory files, and I'm trying to connect it, trying to open up a file in my head right now. And I don't know if it's taking me back to homebrewing and making 
Belgian beers with Belgian dark candy sugar. But there's this mm -hmm. like familiar flavor, I'm sorry, aroma I'm getting. I think it's gonna be in the flavor too. All right, cheers, let's cheers. find out. That is ridiculous. Mm. It's Maple. so smooth. Yeah. I mean, right now without the pecans, which I can imagine being in there, and the spices, mm -hmm. it tastes like a maple mead. Yeah. An acerglin. Yes. An acerglin. Belgian dark candy sugar. I'm definitely getting that caramel. You know what? I said traditional mead, but I bet that we actually did some Belgian dark candy sugar because I just it looks like it and I keep tasting it. Mm -hmm. I think those are probably the two things that we did probably when we were making Safe Word because I think we made that at the same time that we made this. So I think there is some Belgian dark candy sugar and I think it's really working nicely with that stout because there's no real maple or vanilla mm -hmm. that we're gonna get except that the wildflower honey that we use for Super B, it seemed to react with these barrel nails that we just pulled to, to create this vanilla that I don't remember being in Super B, not, not like that anyways. Very cool. It's not overwhelmingly stouty either. It's just complex. I agree. But you get some of that chocolate that it starts off in, in like my mid palate as maybe milk chocolate and mm -hmm. then turns into dark chocolate in the finish. This is going to be, I mean, once this gets pie spices yeah. and, and roasted pecans, that is the perfect setup for a pecan pie meat. Totally. I'm so excited that we're doing that. It's we got the color, the flavor, like, you know, when you like, it's so satisfying when you like scoop off the top of the you know the nuts in a pecan pie and then they're just all gooey and stuck together it's like it looks like that and we've made one pecan pie mead in the past right long time a long ago. time ago yeah i went to the the prescott farmers market and had they had some nuts that were grown um oh maybe like 45 minutes from here cool. and so it was cool yeah getting getting local stuff and uh, i remember cooking them uh on my like grill outside but in a cast iron skillet and just kept moving them around and uh, yeah, roast it like bag after bag of mm -hmm. nuts while I was hanging out. I was lucky enough to try one of those ones and it was amazing. It was so good. Yeah, I think we did that as a collab with Park Plaza Liquor Deli. Nice. Yeah, that was awesome. Cool, well, it's nice to see how this is going. Should we mm -hmm. see if the other barrel's the same? Sure. All right. I drink all mine. Perfect. All right, we're already there. I just want to get that again make sure I couldn't quite reach the other side of this bung when I was to the right. There we go. All right, thank you. And we have our ambassador. Oh, we're gonna have to vent this guy. All right, here we go. Barrel two. I feel like I get even more honey on this one. It is very expressive. Mm -hmm. I like that a lot. It's different. It's smoother. It's sweeter. But, I mean, when you said complex, you're so right. And I, I love, I mean, for me, it's like the nose and the beginning mm. of the flavor is like honey. Wow. And then it turns into vanilla, which turns into milk chocolate, which turns into dark chocolate. It's amazing that they can be that different. Yeah. It's really smooth. Did you get, and I got more maple in the first one than in this one. Mm-hmm. Do you get, I, I, I feel like that dark chocolate flavor, it's, I think that's coming a little bit from the coffee working with the stout. Sure. Because I don't really get a, a coffee flavor like maybe I would expect, but I get an essence of it. Mm -hmm. How about you? Um, I get more chocolate than coffee. Yeah. That's fantastic. Cool. So, you know, one of the reasons why we're going through and trying so many barrels is because we have so many amazing barrels and it's time to, to make some decisions on what to do with some of these. So we just spent a lot of time taking these 
barrels that we have on our list today to, to check out and moving them from the back or middle these these stacks out from the top or the bottom out so we can access them and just that whole process of, of barrel aging is really unique as far as even the location of where the barrels are in the room. So we have air conditioning in here that we will keep at about 75 degrees in the summer because you don't want things to get too hot. Doesn't matter if the barrels get cold. That's actually kind of cool. But as the seasons change and as the, the location of the barrels go up or down, it is going to be warmer up top no matter what. Um, that's going to encourage the the liquid to go in and out of the staves even more as we move things around. So it's kind of a kind of a cool concept. It's a little bit of the romance of barrel aging. Mm -hmm. Do you get some um, butterscotch on this? Yes, mm -hmm. and I didn't in the first one. Nope. Yeah, I would say maple and then butterscotch. Mm -hmm. That's a good pull. Well mm -hmm. played. Thank you. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Again, and and blending these, it's going to be even more complex than each barrel by itself. So. That's going to be one heck of a mead this fall. Cheers. All right, let's take some notes. I got one sip left for. Was this at? Cheers. We'll do a happy <laughs> cheers next. All right, XOO8. So maple, maple. and. Boucher. Boucher. And that one's butterscotch, X007. 